Hey everybody, welcome to Real Time with Red Panda. I'm your host, Alex Debris. This is episode seven, and today we're gonna to be talking a lot, a lot more about real time streaming with Red Panda. We've got a great show today. We're, we're doing a live migration. So I wanna pull on uh, first our two guests today, you know, a, a recurring guest, CEO, host, uh, CEO and founder of Red Panda, Alex G is with us. And we, we've also got a new guest today. We've got Michal Maslanka, uh, software engineer from Krakow Poland. So Alex, Michal, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us, Alex. It's always it's great to be here. Today's going to be super fun. Uh, we're going to be talking about live migration. We are going to be demoing a live migration from uh, uh, Confluent Cloud into Red Panda Cloud, but it works with any uh, Kafka cluster into any Red Panda cluster. Um, you know, and I think it's we have this major milestone that we wanted to share with you guys. Uh, Stay tuned for a GA of this release that we are talking about today next week on the on some features that are landing. So the official GA for everyone to consume will land next week. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, um, let's get into it. And, and uh, before we get started, I'd love to introduce the everyone on the live stream to Miha Mashlanka. I actually, so Miha and I work together at Akamai, not like on the same project. Uh, and, and so he was part of the team in Poland. And so when I started the company, I reached out to engineers that I thought were really good. And, and so I pinged Miha and I was like, hey, Miha, I'm starting this new idea. This was in 2019. And I think, Miha, you had just accepted a job at, at another company. I think you were a month there. Yeah, and exactly. you were like, yes, let's, let's build this company. Yeah, that was that was really cool. And thank you for having me here. Yeah, Alex was saying that we we will be looking for compiler bugs and and uh, working on really cool stuff. And that's really what what it is. Yeah, awesome. and then, yeah. Uh, okay. Go ahead. I'm just gonna say thanks for joining us. I love that that you both are, are swagged up with the with the fancy red panda shirts for sure. And um, so yeah, great to be here today. I just want to set out a little bit of like what we're doing here. You know, as Alex mentioned, we're gonna be doing some migration today. I think Alex is gonna get us set up set up first and just show at a high level, like hey, what's what's going on here? What's the architecture that's gonna be happening? What's the process that's gonna be happening? And then and then Mihao's got the demo to to actually show it in practice. So you get to you get to start with the the run through here, Alex. Yeah. Cool. Let's do it. So I'll, I'll turn you on there. Uh, so yeah. So what do we have going on today? All right. So let's talk about the live migration. Um, and then let me just expand my screen a bit. All right. So we're going to have Alex uh, talking to Miha. Um, and we are going to then this is going to be uh, the first um, instance of the script is going to be, it's a chat application and, and it's going to be connected to Confluent Cloud. Um, and so Alex is going to send messages to uh, a Kafka cluster on Confluent Cloud and then Miha is going to consume messages from uh, Confluent Cloud. But this works with any vendor, MSK, Ivan, it doesn't really matter. To us, is uh, it's just an easy way to, to run Apache Kafka and so we connect it to it. And then, um, the magic is uh, Rian Deland from when he was at LinkedIn, he wrote this thing called Mirror Maker 2, um, Ryan Deland. And, the, and so we're going to be starting up a Mirror Maker 2 process. And that was now, I think, upstream into, into the main project. But um, this is really a comprehensive tool that mirrors data and, and read echoes for some of you guys in the audience. Um, so if you start to mirror live data, um, just note that you won't propagate right echoes, but and then on the other end uh, of the world, and so imagine a totally different um, cluster, region, cloud. It really doesn't matter. Um, we're gonna be talking to Red Panda, Red Panda, and so now here's the is the interesting part. This green box runs in localhost, right? So imagine they're really just connecting to like somewhere in your in your in your application. And the point of this is to eventually migrate the chat window into into a red panda cluster uh, without any you know downtime borrow some TCP reconnections uh, and, and that's basically the gist. And so it's gonna be two this is gonna be a two-step process. Uh, first, we are going to, the first part that we're going to do is we're going to migrate uh, Miha 
And so Alex is still going to send messages to Confluent Cloud. Um, note that Mirror Maker 2 is also going to run on, on localhost on Miha's laptop. And so the first migration is we're going to move Miha, the consumer, into, into Red Panda Cloud, but Alex will still produce to Confluent Cloud just to show the Mirror Maker bridge actually working and replicating data in near real time. Um, and then we're going to move Alex. And the result of this is that Alex is going to keep the consumer offset when it connects to Red Panda Cloud. That, that is key, right? And so imagine that you've transferred a terabyte of data. And so you don't want your consumers to all of a sudden be switched back. And so kind of one, one key thing that we should talk about today, and we shouldn't leave this live stream if we don't talk about that, is that what is the difference between Mirror Maker 2 and Shadow Indexing you know, when, you, when you're talking about terabytes or, you know, actually some of our customers, we just crossed the first 100 petabyte per year workload, which is super cool in terms of historical data. So what happens when your scale is so, so large? Uh, and and where, where is Mirror Maker 2 useful? Where is Shadow Indexing useful? And, and it's really a function of cost and latency. But before we get into details, this is a setup. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love it. So yeah, Mirror America, absolutely copying that data over and not just, you know, the topic data, like you're saying, but also those consumer offsets. So it's basically transparent to that copy of the consumer reading from it. And then once that's sort of transferred over, caught up, then you can stop that consumer, restart that consumer and it, and it keeps on processing without even knowing what happened there. Exactly. And so uh, without uh, further ado, Miha, if you want to just take it away and, and uh, show us the demo. Oh, of course. So, oh, we have a little inception here, but here's, here's what we have. So basically, I have here uh, my terminal, and I created like a simple application. That's the TED application that Alex talked about. And this actually creates a Kafka producer and Kafka consumer. And we have a basic security here as well. So we are able to produce to any topic, but we are only able to consume from the topic that we are actually connecting to. And here is this, the whole thing is connected like this. So we have this source Alex user and source Alex pass source because that's that's in the source cluster. And I'm, I, I want to connect here as a user Alex and chat to Michal. And this is connecting to the cluster in the Confluent Cloud. And what is important is that in this Confluent Cloud cluster, we have these two topics here, right? So they are now empty. And right now there are no consumer groups here because we are not consuming anything yet. And that's like a fresh setup. So we will be starting from scratch right now. And let's let's try to see what will happen. So this is all started basically like that. Uh, Alex wrote me, hey, Michal. And I responded, hello, Alex. And this is this offsets. This is just debugging information here. So we know exactly at which offsets we are reading at and we are producing to. And Alex said, let's do the MM2 migration demo. And I said, yeah, sounds great. Right? And so this is basically the, the chat up. So we are able to connect, and this is all working in the right now in the Confluent Cloud. So let's see if some groups are created here. And one thing I want to show here, if, you, if you're looking at that UI and seeing that, that's the Cal UI, uh, you know, now part of Red Panda. We talked about that on the last episode with Real Time with Red Panda. I'll post that in the chat if you want to go check that out. But um, you know, had a great session on on what Cal's doing, how it, it sort of completes the puzzle in terms of the UI of what's going on in your your Red Panda cluster. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so convenient and so like easy to use that I even uh, forgot to mention that it's like, but yeah, it's really cool. great. It makes uh, life a lot of, a lot easier, and, and it's also uh, it's also good looking. So I, I just wanted to show you here that we have this Kafka Python consumer and it it's consuming single partition and it's at the end of this partition right now with zero lag. So this is all working as expected, right? So now if we will turn this uh, client off and turn it turn it back on, we'll not be will not be reading messages from start. That's what Alex said. So we have the consumer group. We continue where we are left off because offset is committed and stored in the source cluster. 
right? And now I, I would like to show you one more thing. So if we are, if we would like to, we switched off here the Michal client. So if I would like to read Alex messages, I would connect here to Alex, right? I would try to connect to Alex with my credentials and that should be possible because it's like I'm unauthorized to connect. So that this ACLs are working. We have basic authorization here. Let's put it back to like this, right? So yeah, and now we have uh, so, so far, just to clarify for folks, so far, we're still on that that single, you know, existing Kafka cluster. We've got our two yeah. clients both producing and consuming from it, chatting to each other. Um, yeah, what's next? Exactly. And the next part is to run the mirror maker, right? So we have right now, the mirror maker is set up in a such a way that it's going to connect to the source cluster and transfer over topics, read ACLs, read topic ACLs, exactly. Uh, actually, and uh, concern groups to the target cluster. So now I'm going to do it here. So you can see that that's a simple process. One, one quick thing to note, Miha, is that we were, Mirror Maker 2 is using the upstream Apache Kafka <coughs> APIs, and so it, it should just work, just like any other Kafka application, just like effectively any of our customers. Um, we take pride in trying to support, you know, sort of this seamless migration into into Red Panda, right? We literally built the, the TCP parser of the Kafka protocol, so you don't have to. And what it gives us is this ecosystem compatibility. We're just showcasing Mirror Maker 2, but it would be true for ClickHouse and Mongo and all of these other databases and um, so, anyways, it's just I just wanted to mention that it is using the upstream Mirror Maker two. Uh, we just downloaded. What what version did you download, Miha? It's actually three point oh. It's yeah, so just a three point oh tar, and then we just run it. Yeah, exactly. The only thing that you need to remember is to install Java, which you may already forget about <laughs> when you're exactly. <laughs> yeah, so basically that's running here and. Let's see what's the progress in the in Cal UI. So this is this is right now a target cl a source cluster, right? So we can see here in the topics menu uh, that some of the topics here are created by the by the mirror maker, like heartbeats and all, all those offset uh, checkpoint topics. And let's see if we have something in our target cluster here. Yeah, so every, everything is here as well, right? So you can see that that was empty. We only had this uh, cloud SLA verification topic here. And now we have uh, Michal and Alex topics here. Let's see if they have some messages. So you can see that the messages were mirrored, right? And now mm, let's take a look at the customer groups. So customer groups aren't here because we, we do not yet consume anything from it, right? But they will be here in a minute, sorry for that. So let's right now try to run something like this. So Michal will now, Michal client will now connect to the target cluster. So just to show you that it's actually connecting to other cluster, it's here. So we have different credentials because users, as we said, they are pre-created in the clusters as that's not the part of the Kafka in the protocol and users in both Confluent Cloud and Red Panda Cloud they are handled by the different APIs. But uh, this is, as you can see here, connecting to Vector REST Cloud. And let's run it. Right. Uh, so, Alex, do you, want to, do you want to switch back to my screen real quick so I can showcase the, uh, just the drawing real quick? So what Miha just did is we just did step one, right? So we just did this migration where Miha is now Miha underscore, oops, let me get the yellow. Um, is now Miha underscore, I think target, yep. dot sh. And so before it was Miha dot sh and Alex dot sh. And so that, so we just basically did this migration um, visually and in a second. So we're gonna produce from Miha um, excuse me, we're going to produce from Alex to Confluent Cloud, and we're going to consume 
um, from Miha connected to uh, to Red Panda Cloud. And let me just highlight that real quick. Here, let me erase a bunch of lines and then say, um, this black line is no longer the case here. And now we just have this proper line is now, this is now here. So so this is now the, the connection, right? Um, just for, for the audience. Exactly. Um, so Alex, Dave, if you want to switch over onto Miha's screen. There we go. Yeah. So exactly as Alex said, we should be able now to see this. This will, of course, have a little bit of lag because it may take some time. I'm into this target topic. Yeah, so you can see it, the message is here, right? Yeah. Let's see the groups. But the Miha group is empty. There was some connection issue. Oh, yeah, there it is. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So we have it here. So nice. So just in terms of flow there, Alex is still, everyone's still producing, I guess, Alex is producing two existing Kafka cluster. That's getting mirrored over to Red Panda, which is where exactly. Miha is now consuming from. So at some point when you're, you're sort of, I guess, mirror makers replicated you over, you just stop your consumers, start them again. And uh, yeah, the and this is what, I, what I've done for Miha. It's like, I, I stopped it, the consumer, I switch it over. So it's like, the what is different here is, uh, security setup because in Confluent by default they are using plain Scrum and we are using uh, SHA-256 Scrum method and the, the address is obviously different and credentials are different but all the other things uh, so ACLs, topics, customer groups they were uh, mirrored by the mirror maker and we can connect Alex to the target eventually here Alex, uh, did you want to switch over onto my screen? Okay, let's see his demo. Before you hit enter, I just want to give people another... Oh, there it is. Okay. Do you know, here's the thing about CLI demos. I feel that it's when I show it to my wife, it's very anticlimactic to people that aren't like in this, just because it's like, you know, here's this line, and then it appears on this other terminal, and like the nerd in me, and we're just like, oh, this is like really cool. And then I showed this to my wife, and she's like, so what happened? And I was like, look, it showed up on this other terminal, and it's, uh, yeah. But anyways, we should switch over onto onto the graph so I can show the you know people tuning into uh, the Twitch stream. Just keep them up to date. So what happened now? Um, so it happened very fast. Uh, and and but what we just did is we just took this line and now we're here. And so it's now completely moving into. We're now completely migrated. But, but I think it was the subtle thing is that. Um, we produce, I think, two. I think two messages to so so offsets technically, right? Uh, this was offset two, and magically, when Alex uh, uh, migrated over onto Red Panda Cloud, it kept at offset two, uh, and so that like this is the PS de la resistance. This is sort of the salient point: is you don't have to reconsume your entire data, and your consumer groups are checkpointed. And obviously you can produce and consume and, and all of these things work, right? In the same Kafka API, and we use SAS or Scram and, and we use different authentication and it went through the ACL control system and the back pressure and abuse prevention. There's possibly about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, like seven layers of auditing and security before you were actually able to consume that. So when it all works, it's anticlimactic because you type right on the terminal and then it shows on the other terminal. Um, but mentally, believe me, it's, it's, it's kind of... Uh, um, Anyway, sophisticated. Back, back to you. Come Mihai, on, I, 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 I tried to make this CLI app as good looking as possible. <laughs> Oops, at the inception. Um, yeah, and I agree. Like, you know, one thing I like about the the visualness of it uh, is going into Cal, and you can see you're connecting to your Red Panda cluster from Cal, and you can see all those messages you previously sent, and and all those new messages as well. So I think that's a nice uh, visual element of that as well. Totally. Um, 
let's see, Miha, anything else that you want to showcase on your end or should we start to talk about like the value of M2 versus shadow indexing? I think that the, that's going to be all from from okay. the side of the of the of the this migration itself, right? So we, we migrated the cluster successfully, and now we have two applications, two clients running on the target cluster, and they continue where we left off. So yeah, I know that that was simplistic demo, as you said. Something that was no, I mean this <laughs> was cool. This was yeah. simple. Yeah. Yeah, the, the great part is like how seamless this is and how it works. And you can, you know, completely switch clusters and take advantage of the Red Panda performance, but also the shadow indexing and things like that from Alex. Um, one thing I want to say real quick, just to, to folks that are watching, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll we'll bring up an answer here. But otherwise, we'll just talk a little bit more about, you know, issues you might see while migrating or how to think about this stuff or how it all all interacts together. Um, I know we had one point on the how Mirror Maker works with with the ACLs and things like that. Do you, do you want to want to talk about that and, and what to think about there? Oh yeah, we had. Do you want to cover the the source code of of Mirror Maker oh, too? Sure. If you want to bring up the the sure. GitHub link, I think it's is this um, detail that is useful for um, for people using Mirror Maker. But anyways, go ahead. D definitely, definitely. That's that's something that we need to remember about so that. The mirror maker is not fully replicating all the ACLs that are set up in the cluster. So I had to prepare that demo. I had to pre-populate some of the ACLs on the target cluster because, it, as you can see here, right? So this is the code that syncs uh, ACL, ac topic ACLs. And you can see here that we list all ACLs and then we filter them out so that there are only topic of uh, so resource type is topic and the pattern type is literal and then there is this small method should replicate ACL which checks whether this ACL is actually not the one which allows to write so so, so, so basically yeah okay, parts of your ACLs will not be automatically migrated and yeah that, so this is something that that is good to remember about when you are doing this like that's either from Red Panda or like to Red Panda or to whichever else Kafka compatible system, right? Yeah. So make sure you're testing yeah. those migrations and staging and, and, you know, setting up your user lists, I believe we need to do. And then also setting up those right ACLs or, or those ones that get filtered out of here just to make sure everything's going to work well once you, once you switch everything over. Agreed. One, um, one, one thing to note is, is obviously, um, I think it makes sense uh, as a default um, because a lot of these are done for disaster recovery, right? And so um, it may be like, you may want to have separate ACLs writing on, on, on different clusters. Uh, and, uh, you know, you may have like uh, the front end proxies might be able to connect to two different clusters before, like typically, right? Like on, on, on an application, we have a proxy, of some app, let's say a click stream if you're an ad tech or a fraud detection if you're a bank, et cetera. Those things will translate what are your app into a log that eventually shows up into Red Panda. And so um, so I think it's it's a safe default and it's and it's um, yeah, so just something for you. If you want the thing to make sure you have right access to both clusters, you do have to propagate um, the right uh, access to yourself. Here's the thing. For most people, setting up this disaster recovery is like a one you know, like you, you spend the time in the infrastructure, you set it up on whatever you're you're running your clusters or containers, whether it's Kubernetes or something else, right? Like once you set up this process, and so it's not a it's not it's not really a thing that 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 you really need to worry too much, right? Like someone else or or the maybe if you're a small shop, then you do worry about setting it up. But if you want this kind of live migrations, it typically is for customers that are a little bit more sophisticated in terms of um, their, their, their failure recovery and they have the budget, which I want to talk about next. Um, but yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, that's great. Right. And, and just a note for, that was great. Thank you for that, that explanation. Just a note for other people, you know, we're walking through this demo visually. Michal did a great job with that. If you want additional details, there is a, um, a post on the Red Panda website about how to do this migration and some additional details there. So dropping that into the chat right now, but, but make sure you check that out if you're, if you're interested. Awesome. Um, do you want to bring up the, the tablet, my tablet? Yeah, absolutely. So... While Miha was, was talking, I, I just wanted, I think, to give a sense of when when is it appropriate to use Mirror Maker and when how does it relate into, into shadow indexing? And so 
the way I typically like to think about it, and there is flexibility in both, right? Like this is in, it, it's, it's a tool and then you decide how much money you want to pay for the tool effectively. Think of that as mirror maker and same thing with Red Panda and so on. But generally speaking, what, what we have seen is that if you want uh, low latency uh, um, synchronization of clusters, like we show, you know, once, once like all the consumer groups have started to, to populate and all of that, um, then it's in like, you know, human real time, like you, you can, you can potentially chat and, and, and see things react. Let's say you were building a Slack replacement of sorts. So that's what I would say mirror maker to, uh, matters the most is when you want this, this really super low latency thing. It's expensive to run if you're running this across multiple clouds, or if you're running this across multiple, uh, I think, uh, even regions of, of, of any particular cloud. And so for, other things we recommend using our shadow indexing, which leverages internal S3 tiered replication. And so instead of, um, of, of using Mirror Maker 2, which uses resources on both ends, which means, here, yeah, let's think about actually what this means. It means that from the network side, you're effectively halving your entire total resources. And so by pushing the complexity around to S3, you get back effectively twice the capacity of both cluster source and destination. So let's talk about that real quick. And then we're going to wrap up in about five to 10 minutes. So Mirror Maker 2 uh, gives you this, this super low latency things. Generally speaking, it's because you care about that, that sort of instantaneous failover. Like it's a hot, hot cluster usually, um, or you know within like a second of latency or whatever it takes uh, MM2 to actually send data over onto the other cluster. Um, is when you really want that, that instantaneous failover, like you have SLAs, you know, let me give you an example. Let's say that you're trading a billion dollars and you're settling, um, you're settling a bank account across a bunch of banks. It doesn't really matter <laughs> if you spent a hundred dollars uh, or, you know, whatever, five dollars even on, or a couple of bucks on sending data across multiple clouds with Mirror Maker 2, which is immaterial, right? Like getting that wrong, is would be would be catastrophic at like a really large level, right? So, and now compare that if you were doing ad tech or clicks when you're really just making, you know, cents on the dollar. Let's say a cent on a dollar, or maybe four cents on a dollar. Then, then what matters is like okay, you would want that, but really what you care about is the cost of doing that live migration is probably more expensive than if you leverage internal S three aggregate data translation. So let's talk about that for a second. But that's generally the guidance and only you know where in this spectrum you need, you know, maybe like you just, you you move you move this line here because, um, you know, this is for you, this is really where Mirror Maker is. Like you want the majority of your data to be real time or maybe you move, you know, the aggregate data all the way here because, you know, you want to keep a cheap uh, or you know a cost-effective way of, of transferring data, so so really think about that uh, as a way to 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 reason about the cost of your infrastructure. The next thing I, I really want to highlight two things, which is the cost of Mirror Maker computationally speaking. Often this translates to the mechanical cost and, and and network bandwidth, and then really the one that ends up making like a bandit is this is the hyper clouds. You know whether it's Amazon or Google or Azure, they're the ones that make all the money. Neither you know the, not nor the vendor nor like the person who's actually replicating data. But when you have a cluster, let's say cluster one and cluster two, oops, um, and your mirror and traffic go both ends, um, you have to take into account the 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 local traffic of of both clusters, right? And so what happens is if you if you think about the cost of traffic, you're putting the pressure of all of these uh, clusters and all of these clusters, right? And so actually the capacity of your cluster is this is this technically this intersection for both sides. Uh, that that really is the, is the true capacity that you can do because you're consuming network resources here, which is the same computers that are also consuming network resources here, and same thing for consuming and producing here and there. Now, when you change this paradigm and you add shadow indexing, let me give you a mental model for the how this changes. So you still have um, cluster one and you still have cluster two. 
And you do, you may um, experience higher latency to be able to consume on this side. But what you've effectively eliminated is this transfer between clusters become the S3 API. And it could be GC, GCS for Google and Azure Blob Store for Azure. But the point is that now you, your, your capacity, if you really do sort of um, this Venn diagram, is uh, your total capacity is largely the sum of all of this and the sum of all of that. Um, actually, they don't, they, don't, they don't overlap. Let me think about that. Um, I guess for real time, this is true. And if you are reading from historical data, then you will consume some additional resources for reading historical data. Uh, but by and large, if you're really talking about just disaster recovery, you get the union rather than, uh, and I don't think it's overlapping, rather than um, rather than the intersection. So when you start to think about cost structures, it it matters, uh, uh, you know, basically on on a cost perspective. So just to wrap up, the mental picture is that Mirror Maker Two is really about low latency. And only you can determine based on what do, do you actually care about? Do you have, is your use case important enough or is it truly mission critical enough that you want this low latency, actual real time data replication? Or, uh, do you know, and, and, and it means that from a mental perspective, you're having your capacity of your clusters or do you rather have the union of this at the expense of having higher latency, right? So if you think about that, and we covered this on the previous live stream show, of Red Panda is what happens is, let's say you have three Red Panda nodes and they're all talking to each other. And so when segments uh, get evicted, they get uploaded onto, onto S3 and imagine those are files. And so what happens is if you have a separate cluster, let's say cluster one, um, and it also is, is a set of Red Panda, then um, with shadow indexing, what that allows you to do uh, is that you can actually fetch data using the S3 API uh, to, to basically bring data local to that particular AZ region and then download it and render it to whatever application is, is connecting into the Red Panda cluster. So uh, this is higher latency. It's much higher throughput uh, because you're effectively leveraging the S3 internal API. And I think there's an S3... API called S3 copy object uh, to put it on a different bucket, uh, but it, it is higher latency, um, but it's also very high throughput. It's basically uh, throughput. Really, we haven't run into a single customer that has uh, uh, saturated the throughput of the S3 copy API across a region, even during a disaster recovery case. Most real-time applications are you know, less than, than a few gigabytes per second. And S3, uh, depending on your contract size and how the sharding strategy is done, which we take care of that, it really gives you multiple gigabytes per second download. I'll stop talking here. This is, this is you know, super technical and we went down into the weeds, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how to think about the difference of the systems. And just to make sure I'm understanding that, so if you had a hot, hot setup with two different regions and you're using tiered storage, are you saying I wouldn't have to sort of run it, like if, I, if I'm pulling up a new hot region, I wouldn't have to run everything through my Red Panda cluster and, and pull it down from S3? I could just sort of copy it from S3 and it could, it could ingest from there? Yeah, and Red Panda handles that. So it's it's literally a configuration object. Oh, like wow. you, you're on the destination cluster, you say Red Panda, um, apply this read replica region. That's that's coming um, in a you know later this quarter probably. Um, um, what works today is transparent tiered storage. That's something that is part of the enterprise today. And so what the the idea here is that Red Panda should just be able to use a bucket as a read replica. So there is no active load for transferring the data. And it really goes. There's so many layers of security. There's CPU utilization because you're no longer decrypting messages. You're no longer validating the echoes. Like all of that happens transparently for you at the file handle level. So it's just, it's super, super efficient in terms of cluster resources. Um, beyond just the, the network and disk utilization, there's also a huge value add in terms of just load and CPU load and things like that. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, shadow indexing, su super um, interesting thing. You know, we talk about it a lot on uh, previous episodes of Real Time with Red Panda. I'm gonna drop a few links. You know, there is 
tomorrow. There's going to be a virtual workshop, so make sure you sign up for that. I just dropped it in the chat, but that'll be um, that'll be tomorrow there. So make sure you you join, and you'll you'll get to hear about like hey use cases, some of the details that that Alex G is talking about here, but also there's there's Q and A and things like that. So if you have questions about how shadow indexing works, how it can work for your situation, um, I think that'd be a, a great thing to check out. Alex Mihal, this, is, this has been great. Any other things we, we should um, hit on before we go? This is uh, super interesting to see these migration use cases, to see the, the hot, hot use cases with Mirror Maker and things like that. Um, anything the else? The last thing, yeah, one, one last thing I'll mention is underscore consumer offsets. Consumer offsets. So this is an internal topic that is uh, used in Kafka for additional tools. Kyle uses this, there's basically this ecosystem of, of tools. I think um, um, LinkedIn Borrow is, is a project that, that may be using this. There, there's a set of projects that, that leverage this as a way to detect consumer lag. Um, even though it wasn't necessarily needed for this live migration, it is needed for ecosystem compatibility. And so that's landing next week. So stay tuned for the official release of Consumer Offset. So more tools just continue to become uh, you know, there, there's uh, we try to be. There's no. Here's the here's the line for people tuning in. If the if your application doesn't work, it's just a bug with Red Panda, and then we go and we fix it. And so this was one of those bugs that that um, is a long 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 pole bug that we're super excited to have. And then the last one is uh, no, I actually think this this was the main one that that is landing into into this official release. So. Um, with that, thanks thanks to everyone for for joining in. It's it's always super fun to join and and talk you know, be nerdy on, on the details of Red Panda. Absolutely. Awesome. So yeah, thanks everybody for joining in. Alex, thanks for being here. Michal, thanks for, for showing up and wearing your, your cool Red Panda shirt as well. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up on Twitter, um, Slack, all that stuff. You can go to red, redpanda.com slash Slack to join the community, get some swag there or anything you want. But otherwise, just uh, check back next time. I think we'll be back in two weeks with a pretty cool use case there. So uh, we'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.